Hey, what's up guys? Andrew from American Musical Supply here at Summer Nam, day two. I'm in the Fender booth with Rodrigo, and he's going to talk to me about some new Fender FX pedals. Love to. How's it going? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing well. Got some uh, cool and uh, new and unusual things here to show you. Right on. Yeah. So the first one I want to show you guys is the Compugilist, which if you're familiar with our FX pedals from last year, it might seem a little familiar to you. Uh, it's basically the Benz compressor and the Pugilist that have been combined into one box okay. with a very simple knob layout. So you have compression on one side, distortion on, on the other, and they're both independently switchable. So compression, you know, obviously you're going to get lots more sustain than snap. And you can layer in the distortion, which is the, the A side of the Pugilist. So if you're familiar with that pedal, two different gain engines. So this is the A side that's featured on this pedal. Okay. So really good kind of medium gain crunch for kind of classic rock sort of stuff. I'll dime it out here so you can hear kind of the upper end of what the gain sound kind of sounds like. So that's the distortion side of the Compugula. So again, all analog, independently switchable. We brought back the battery box for this particular one. So you'll notice that most of the, uh, these new pedals have the magnetic battery door. Uh, so that's the Compugilist. Uh, the Trapper is a cool new dual fuzz that we've got that features two different voices. One's got an octave that's switchable and one has a, a, a really crazy sounding noise gate, which is what we were listening to right before I started here. So uh, let's toggle that on. So first side is the octave side. So this is without the octave engaged. Once you flip the octave on, so you notice it's a more of a harmonic octave, so you get kind of some interesting ring modulation, kind of like artifacts in there, kind of splatty sounding with chords. Flipping over to the other side, you have just a single level control, no control over the amount of fuzz, so it's a little bit uncontrollable and unpredictable, which is kind of what we like about this pedal. So here's the, the gated side. And you'll notice some kind of sputtery weird. The pedal almost sounds like it's kind of broken, kind of dying, or like it's sagging or not getting enough power. That's absolutely intentional, uh, and part of the charm of this half of the pedal. The other thing you'll notice is a uh, global uh, tone and contour controls on this guy. So the contour will take you from emphasizing bass frequencies to emphasizing treble frequencies, and the tone control kind of functions like you would expect it to, and kind of remove some of the high end sizzle from the pedal. Gotcha. Um, so that's the Trapper, uh, cool new unique fuzz developed by Stan Cody, and kind of the you know the the bigger brother of our Pelt fuzz from last year. Right. So moving along, we've also got the MTGLA, which is a high gain version of the MTG pedal that we just put out uh, in January. So you'll notice immediately this has a little bit more low end and a little bit more gain than the, the previous version did. Uh, it's also got the, the, the same configurable boost which you can use to add saturation or level. Um, so I'll engage that here. You can drive that up even more. So another tube distortion pedal designed in collaboration with Bruce Egnator features a real, a real NOS military uh, 6205 preamp tube inside the pedal, but runs on a regular standard 9 volt power supply. So no unique voltage requirements or, uh, or heavy power requirements for this guy, which is something that we're very proud of as well. Um, moving into the pour over, which is a new envelope filter that we've got that's good for either guitar or bass. Um, just to quick, quickly take you through the layout, you've got a filter side and a distortion side. The filter side features a high pass, a band pass, and a low pass. So you can get anything from kind of you know wah-like sounds to more synthy type of tones. Easy to optimize for guitar or bass depending on which frequency range you're working with. So 
Uh, it's also got a built-in distortion section, which is toggleable via this little switch right here. Distortion comes before the filter, so if you want a little bit more kind of juice for the filter to work with, you can toggle on the distortion and get some really interesting sounds out of that. So we'll start with just the, uh, just the filter part. So, kind of pretty typical Ottawa type of sounds. It's a little low in volume right now. I'm going to see if I can bring it out a little bit with some, some of the compressor or distortion. Then, adding in the distortion. Some really interesting, more synthy type of tones. The filter can drive up or it can drive down, so let's hear what that sounds like. So, right now we're driving up, but we can drive that filter down as well. So, you can get some really interesting, like, swell kind of sounds out of there. Um, so, that's the pour over. Uh, moving on to the reflecting pool, which is probably the most uh, complex and, and uh, you know lots of different options here. This is a combined reverb and delay pedal. Okay. Um, it's based on our mirror image and marine layer pedals, again from last year. Um, but we've added a more advanced DSP, so better signal processing, better sounding algorithms, and some more um, some more options for the player in terms of different types of subdivisions, different types of special reverbs and things like that. Right. Um, so let me hit, turn out the distortion here, and I'll take you through the reverb section. So it starts with a hall. Uh, and you've got three different variations for each reverb type. So with the hall in the room, you can use the variation switch to make the size of the reverb a little bit bigger or smaller, depending on what you want. So one will be the smallest, three is the biggest. So as we go down the... And then the biggest size. Room sound is what you'd expect. A little bit more controllable than the hall, but again, you can make it as big as you want. But where this pedal really gets fun is on the special side. So flipping over here, you've got a shimmer on one, a reverse gated reverb on variation two, and then a modulated plate reverb on variation three. So this is where things kind of get a little bit more interesting. So what we're hearing right now is the shimmer. You'll also notice there's a, there's a knob here that's marked extra, which will control a different parameter depending on which variation you have set. So okay. here's the reverse gated reverb. And the extra knob will kind of control the shape of the, the gate with this particular one. So you can get some different kind of some different kind of tones with a more a more severe cutoff at the very end. So really interesting kind of trippy gated reverb there. And then the plate is a modulated like I was uh, mentioning before. So. So this, out of all the different reverbs in, the, in this box, this one has the longest decay time and it's got the modulation built in, so you can hear it just takes a super long time to fade out. Right. Great for ambient sounding stuff. Flipping over to the, the delay side, you've got digital, analog, and tape style delays, again with a, a three-way switch, this time for quality so you can degrade them over time. Okay. There's also a, a whole lot of different stuff uh, pertaining to subdivisions here, so I won't go too in depth with that, but um, an interesting feature here is that you can hold down the tap tempo and you can use the time knob on the delay setting to, to choose which subdivision is delivered to you via uh, tap tempo. Uh, and there's also a, a mix control that allows you to blend between the two different delays. So there's a main delay and there's a subdivided delay. Um, so you're able to pick the main delay uh, from here and then you can choose your subdivision delay from here. So you'll see the 50, 66, and 75% thing. Yep. That's going to be uh, your subdivision delay, which is either an eighth note, a dotted eighth, or an eighth note triplet relative to the quarter note. Um, and of course, we've got tap tempo on this pedal as well, which is something that we had been getting a lot of requests for, for the, from the last, uh, the last mirror image pedal. So here's the main delay. Here's your subdivision. 
you can blend those two together for all kinds of rhythmic stuff. Let's turn the feedback up a little bit more and we'll throw it on the digital side so we can kind of hear those repeats a little bit more clearly. Um, the delay side also features its own modulation, so you'll see a depth and a rate, which is just a dedicated modulation control for the delay. So you can hear that modulation start to come in. It gets pretty severe towards the, you know, the upper end of the depth control. And then obviously you can layer the two together. Uh, the delay feeds into the reverb. You can get some really cool sounds with the two. different reverb there. So that's the reflecting pool. Tons of different sounds in there. Um, very comprehensive from both the reverb and the delay side. So we're really proud of this guy. And then the final pedal that I want to show you guys is the Smolder, which is an acoustic overdrive and probably the weirdest and most uh, uh, talked about thing that we're showing at, at this particular NAMM show. So I'm going to switch guitars really quick and then okay. plug in an acoustic really, real quick so you guys can hear that. So um, Smolder Acoustic Overdrive, uh, it basically starts with a pickup compensation control that's designed to dial out some of the low end flubbiness of a piezo pickup. So. Start with start with the pedal engaged. I'm going to turn the blend control all the way to the dry side so we're just hearing the acoustic. And then we'll bring in that pickup compensation control. So hopefully you guys are hearing this a little bit better in the DI than I can with my ears right now. But this pickup compensation is going to dial out a lot of that kind of low end flubbiness that causes feedback and makes distortion really problematic for acoustics. Um, so that's kind of where the whole thing starts. And from there your signal runs through an emulation of a deluxe reverb preamp, cabinet, and a microphone simulation, all totally analog. Um, which is why we're running this into a full range PA speaker. It's kind of optimized for that sort of setup. Um, so let's hear what it sounds like as I bring in the distortion. So there's a blend control right here in the middle, which is kind of key to dialing in the, the wet to dry mix. All the way over to the affected side, here's the distortion. not having too much problem with feedback and we're pretty close to the speaker so the pickup compensation control is definitely helping uh, you know keep the piezo element intact and then of course you can dial in anywhere in between so really cool for you know singer songwriters or, or you know guys and gals that want to add a little bit of extra grit for a chorus or a kind of a more impactful part of the song Super cool. Um, and actually, interestingly enough, this is actually a pretty inherently good pedal for recording with electric guitar as well, too. You can simply turn the pickup compensation control all the way off, and you've basically got a deluxe reverb amp in a box that you can use for, you know, for recording silently in your bedroom if you'd like to. Awesome. Um, so that's the Smolder Acoustic Overdrive. I think it was maybe the sleeper of the show and is quickly becoming the, the star. <laughs> so uh, thank you, guys. Right on. Well, thanks for the rundown. And if you're interested in checking out more about these effects pedals, you can or any other Fender products, you can head on over to AmericanMusical.com.